the voice of the people stand when the 2015 legislature begins. The voters did send a very, very clear message to the legislators on this issue, the um, whether Oregonians who are here illegally should be able to drive and get a driver's card. The, you had a 66 percent um, victory in that, and it was um, uh, undeniable uh, what the voters, the people of Oregon, want with regard to that issue. What's been interesting, however, is that legislators who very strongly, not just in the last session, but at the last couple of sessions, uh, supported uh, the driver card for people who are here illegally. So is there a mixed message? Are we getting mixed messages from our voters? I'm Patty Milne. This is People, Places, and Politics. And today my guests are Cynthia Kendall and Jim Ludwig who are major, major uh, uh, influences on this issue and have been involved in it for some time. Cynthia joined Oregonians for Immigration Reform in 2008 after years of frustrating encounters with the City of Salem Code Enforcement officers and the Salem-Kaiser Public School Administrators. Cynthia had a trip to Washington, D.C. in 2009 to participate in Hold Their Feet to the Fire event. And then that propelled her to being a spokesperson, a citizen lobbyist, and an activist for Oregonians for Immigration Reform. She is now the president of that organization. Cynthia filed the citizens' veto referendum to overturn Senate Bill 833, which would have granted the, or did, because it was passed, granted driver cards to illegal aliens. She was then selected to be the authorized agent and statewide campaign manager for, for Protect Oregon Driver Licenses and the No on 88 campaign. And of course, Measure 88, as I mentioned, was soundly defeated in November by 66 percent of the vote. Cynthia has made a half a dozen trips to Washington, D.C three trips to the U.S.-Mexican border, and I understand in just the last two years alone, mm -hmm. and you have another trip scheduled in March. Jim Ludwig is the Communication Director for Oregonians for Immigration Reform. However, Jim was a leader in founding the Oregonian uh, for Immigration Reform in the year 2000 and served as the president for 10 years. At first, the goal was to just get people to talk about the issue of immigration. Jim went out, gave speeches, talking to state and private universities, a broad assortment of service clubs, political forums, and high schools, and probably many, many other organizations. Jim has participated in debates against the Mexican Council General in Oregon, the director of the Oregon Association of Nurseries, and a number of immigration attorneys. Uh, state senators and members of the Rural Organizing Project, and many of these debates were broadcast on radio and TV. So there is quite a history here of immigration and immigration reform in the state of Oregon. As I mentioned, you both have an extensive background on this issue and success in moving your, um, your issue forward. And so I want you to talk about, um, you've taken a strong stand, the um, election was very clear. So with such an overwhelming uh, win, who would be opposed to you? Why are they opposed? And what, what, um, what do you see going forward um, now? Uh, immigration continues not only in Oregon, but of course it's a federal issue. So where, where does the federal government play into what's happening here in Oregon? So many questions, mm -hmm. and I'll just pass the ball to you and... and uh, you go ahead first. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, it's interesting to watch as it's playing out what exactly is going to happen and what happens with President Obama's um, plans. And his executive and order. His executive yeah. order scheme. Mm -hmm. um, and how that all plays out will determine to some extent what happens here in Oregon. The Attorney General is looking at the language of the Oregon mm -hmm. driver's license to see if people who are granted this executive amnesty would qualify for an Oregon driver's license. And then as if, hopefully not, but if 
his plans go through, then um, the DACA, the Deferred Action mm -hmm. for Childhood Arrival people, have in the past qualified for driver's cards, so those people would likely qualify. And then the DAPA, the, the parents mm -hmm. of these children, um, would likely qualify. So <clears throat> a lot of people have said to us, well, all that work and for not if this mm -hmm. goes through, but that really isn't true because what tends to happen with an amnesty of any kind is that that simply attracts more people. Mm -hmm. And so we will still not license people that come here illegally and don't have proof of legal presence in the United States. We would prefer to dial it back to where we're supposed to be and where we are right now, um, but everything's up in the air. It's like a juggling So light. if I <coughs> uh, understand what you're saying, those who might fall under this, and you've used the word amnesty, and I'm sure some people would say, no, 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 that's not really what it is, but that might be a discussion mm -hmm. for another day. Yes. Um, but under these two programs. Right. So some people might be able to, depending on the attorney, the, the attorney general, yes. depending on that decision. Yet, there are going to be other people who would, um, where um, now current law will be the result of the failure of this message, I, of, of this ballot measure, is that if you can't show proof, you don't get a driver license, there's not even a driver card Correct. available. So how many, without getting into de too much detail, are you looking at or are you anticipating there'd be a huge number, a small number, or it's a manageable, there might be some reasonable um, uh, qualifiers uh, in this? Well, my, my sense is that uh, fraudulent documents are so easily mm -hmm. obtained now mm -hmm. that, uh, and I think that there's incentive for some people in different parts of the government to uh, allow illegal aliens to get every government social safety net program and that they mm -hmm. would like them in there. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the please, election, if I might. Please do. Uh, you're aware that a referendum is one of the unique things about Oregon. Mm -hmm. We established the initiative and in referendum um, in the early 1900s. We've had it for over 100 mm -hmm. years. And the referendum is a little different than an initiative. Referendum is where a bill has been passed by the legislature, signed into law yes. by the governor, but not yet enacted. And a group of citizens say, we don't particularly like that bill. We think citizens should vote on it. And you have a very narrow time frame to go out and collect mm -hmm. signatures. Actually, you only have 90 days after the end of the session to collect 58,142 which signatures. Which you did. Which we did. Well, <laughs> in order to get that, though, you've got to get a lot more. Uh, we collected 77,000 signatures, we turned in 71,000, and we uh, passed the inspection of the, uh, the Secretary of State's elections office. Mm -hmm. The reason we passed was we had a 93.5% verification rate. Wow, according that's to unusual. Well, according to or, what we were told uh -huh. by the elections official, that was the highest in the 100 plus years history of the elections office to get that. And the reason we got it was we had a wonderful outpouring of support from all over the mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. We got signatures from 134 different communities in Oregon. Now, I've lived most of my life in the mm -hmm. state. I thought I knew every nook and cranny, <laughs> but I, I discovered there's a lot of places I didn't know. We had overwhelming support, and we felt confident if we were qualified, we would win. And if you look at what happened, I mean, it wasn't just a win, it was a landslide. Uh, we had, as you stated, 66% uh, of the people voted no. If you look at the Oregon counties, there's 36 counties. Mm -hmm. 35 of the counties voted against it. Yeah. Should I bring out my yes, yeah. and Cynthia has a visual aid, a visual aid that is fantastic. There's, I see just a very small green sliver up there. Yeah. This is a Multnomah, Multnomah County. County. is the only one. Every yeah. other county defeated Measure 88 by um, a wide, a mm -hmm. wide range of uh, points, but some were um, 80 percent or more. Uh, what was it? 12 counties beat it by 80 percent. Actually, or more. half mm -hmm. of the counties in Oregon, mm -hmm. uh, 16 of them, not 16. 18 of the uh -huh. counties uh, voted by over 80 percent wow. in opposition to it. Uh, every congressional district voted against it. 
even I mean, even the one county that voted for it, half of their county, if you divided mm -hmm. it according to the river, mm -hmm. voted overwhelmingly against it. It was a it was a clear signal that citizens didn't want to give driver cards to people who couldn't prove they're legally here. Mm -hmm. Now, the, and, the unique thing about Oregon, um, we are the only state that has had the opportunity to vote on this mm -hmm. issue. So when you put something like this on the ballot, citizens actually get to have a say mm -hmm. instead of just legislators. Mm -hmm. And we were also the only state in the entire United States to have an immigration issue on the ballot at all. Wow. So all eyes were really on mm -hmm. Oregon as we mm -hmm. were kind of gathering steam and it was looking like we were gonna make it uh, in the election. All eyes focused on Oregon and when we defeated this, um, we actually got more attention nationwide than we did here within the state. The major newspapers are like, oh yeah, and ballot measure was 88 was defeated, moving on to the next th thing, and they just yeah. kind of downplayed it. But it was a huge victory. And it's, it's because most often citizens don't get to have a voice in this. Mm -hmm. And when they do, they spoke loud and clear. And an example of that is what the Oregon legislature did with in-state tuition. Mm -hmm. Oh, this mm -hmm. is an emergency. We need to put an emergency clause on this so that yeah. Oregonians cannot exercise their constitutional right to challenge what we've done. And of course, that was not what happened with this, and yeah. you were they left following that this so open. very closely, <coughs> and you jumped on um, the um, actually the responsibility of citizens and yes. took this through the process. Yes, and we we had met and uh, lobbied vigorously the entire <laughs> time this bill was coming down the mm -hmm. pike. We kept saying, you know, the the polls show your constituents don't want this. The all the proof we have, I mean, we had all the documentation for this. This isn't the route to go. And we were really poo-pooed. And they said, oh, no, everybody wants this. Everybody wants this. And so it's it's a li little bit gleeful to walk through the Capitol with these maps in here. I'd, li I'd like to leave this with you to peruse while you're drinking your morning coffee. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, Cynthia mentioned polls. <coughs> and you hear the talking heads on television talk about this poll says that, this poll says that. We had a real poll on November mm -hmm. 4th. Mm -hmm. It That's, wasn't a yes, phony yes, uh, yes. phone call into a select group of people. We had a huge, uh, huge victory. And when I hear someone says, well, most people aren't that concerned about immigra immigration, or most people uh, want a pathway to citizenship. Well, November 4th demonstrated that's not the case. American citizens are quite fed up with a federal mm -hmm. government that refuses mm -hmm. to enforce its immigration laws mm -hmm. like it's supposed to do. And they're upset with an Oregon legislature that mm -hmm. gives special benefits to people who can't even prove they're legally here. Mm -hmm. It comes at a high cost mm -hmm. to Oregon. Uh, FAIR, the Federation of Americans for Immigration Reform, estimated in a study that it cost Oregon taxpayers, illegal immigration does, $1 billion a wow. year for public services, even after you subtract out possible taxes that the illegal aliens have may, have may, pay, uh, may have paid. Uh, I think it's something like $730 million in public education alone. And as you know, because you've dealt in with that issue, that uh, right now in ESL, ELL programs, mm -hmm. Salem Public School is a good mm -hmm. example of it, each of those <coughs> students gets an extra $3,000 spent on them above mm -hmm. what any other student gets. That comes at a huge cost and it takes really money does. away from American citizens' children. And an interesting uh, fact, too, uh, with regard to that additional funding, that double funding, is um, there are people who are looking into why some of these um, English learners are in these classes learning English for so long. Well, guess what? Yeah. It's because the school gets the money for it. These. These children are not, uh, 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 they're, they're not, they're not stupid. They're, they're smart kids. Um, and they can learn the language in a much shorter period of time. But the schools want the money, so they keep them in, um, in these classes a much There's longer period of time mm -hmm. than There's they There's motivation really to, to not move them through the I know, program. And I just, it just breaks my heart because it's not helping these children. No. And it's holding the children back 
when these, these students could be doing much better than they are and, and they're anxious. You know, the kids typically are really anxious to learn English and yeah. get on with their life. But, but that's another, another issue. Um, I mentioned in my opening comments this irony of this great success uh, you had um, with Measure 88, and yet the legislators who were reelected and yet um, had uh, supported the measure. But apparently there's a disconnect with the voter. And if you could talk just a little bit on it, um, what, what happened? Why, why, weren't, um, why weren't these legislators held accountable, if you will? Well, if you look at the election results, a majority of Republican voters, Democratic Party voters, and independent voters voted against Measure 88. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's because that it was issue specific. When it came to legislators, that's a whole number of other issues mm -hmm. that are that are part mm -hmm. of them, and they're disconnected. Uh, if you did a, 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 a poll on how people feel on the issue of illegal immigration, I have no doubt it would be the same as the vote for driver cards. Mm -hmm. But th there are a number of other issues in which legislators are either elected or not elected. Okay, so well, I, I would I would add ahead. one thing, and we touched on this briefly, but there were several um, legislators who were primary instigators of Senate Bill 833. And if they felt so strongly that this was the right thing to do, why wasn't any of that in any of their campaign literature? Why mm -hmm. did they not mm -hmm. talk about it? Um, why weren't they standing strong for their opinions? Um, they, they made all these deals in the back rooms and slipped this bill through in under a month in the Oregon Capitol because they didn't want any feedback from the public and they didn't want to talk about it in their campaign. But the f there are five candidates that spoke about it long before they even became candidates. Uh, Bill Post mm -hmm. on his uh, radio mm -hmm. show, we had uh, so much airtime on that yeah. show. <laughs> he was very fair mm -hmm. in, in covering our efforts. Uh, Mike Nearman, when he was a uh, Polk County mm -hmm. Republican chair, talked at length about it. He told me when he was campaigning door to door, he was telling people that he was the force behind Bell Major 88. Um, Greg Barreto um, out of Pendleton, when he was, he was in a neck to neck race it was very, very tight. And he was at a, a town hall meeting and one of the sheriffs that participates in several things that uh, we do um, asked a question about driver's card. How do you feel about driver's cards? And his opponent, John Turner, I think his name was, said, well, I think that this is fine and we should do this. And Greg Barreto said, absolutely not. If they're here illegally, we shouldn't be doing anything for them. And he ran away with the race. Uh, Senator, our new Senator Kim Thatcher, mm -hmm. she, was very outspoken. She's a chief petitioner, and she won. And there's one more. Um, who am I missing? Well, Sal Esquivel. Oh, Sal Esquivel, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Representative Esquivel's mm -hmm. chief petitioner, mm -hmm. and he won. Mm -hmm. So people uh, have not connected the dots between speaking freely about being a proud American, being uh, adamant about enforcing our laws, and, and not being uh, ashamed to say so. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that five very good candidates did win, and part of the reason that they did is that they actually campaigned on the issue. Mm -hmm. so. And uh, Cynthia mentioned the, the sheriffs, the Sheriff's Political Action Committee, mm -hmm. their association, there's 36 sheriffs because there's 36 counties, came out in opposition to Measure 88, and in fact uh, spoke out about it frequently, uh, and how why it would be a bad idea. Oregon right now, uh, ranks fourth in the nation in per capita illicit drug use of methamphetamine, mm -hmm. cocaine, and heroin. Part of that's geographical because <clears throat> I-5 I goes up mm -hmm. from Mexico yeah. to the Canadian border. And according to uh, reports by the federal agency that monitors all this, uh, the most all of the methamphetamine, cocaine, and heroin is brought in by the Mexican mm -hmm. drug cartel. Mm -hmm. The most important document a cartel member can have is a valid state driver card because if they're sure. pulled over by a state yeah. trooper, uh, the trooper might, and they can show a driver card, a valid one, the trooper might have probable cause to search their vehicle. And it comes at a horrendous cost to Oregon, the, the mm -hmm. meth trade does. Well, and the human trafficking yes. as well, that is not talked about even as much as the cartels. So there are a lot of issues that, that are very much related to immigration reform and the importance of that. Well, I, I would add, um, 
I was in Washington, D.C., and I was meeting with a gentleman. Um, we had, the election was just two weeks away. And uh, <laughs> so he was saying, well, you know, how did you get to where you are and what have you been doing and everything and, and what's behind all of this? And I said, well, you know, our elected officials are simply choosing to ignore our laws. They're, they're mm -hmm. passing legislation mm -hmm. that just it flies in the face of their oath of office. Mm -hmm. And it, it's very disturbing to me that this is so easily accomplished. And <clears throat> I had the voters pamphlet with me. And I said, I opened it up and I showed him the list of all of the businesses that signed on to the multiple right. voter pamphlet statements yes. in support yes. of ballot measure 88. And I said, every one of these businesses is out and out saying, oh, we need people that are in this country illegally to come and do our work. We need, we support this so we can get our workers to and from their jobs. And he was just shocked. Mm -hmm. I said, they've got it here in writing that mm -hmm. they do this. And mm -hmm. he said, well, you know what you need to do when you get home is take that voter's pamphlet statement to your Bureau of Labor and Industries Commissioner and show him <laughs> the names of all of these businesses. And I said, oh, wait, <laughs> flip forward just a couple pages. Yes. <laughs> because there's a statement saying from that his, from the Brad of Agnes, yes. the Bureau of Labor and Industries yes. Commissioner, who also contributed to the Yes on 88 campaign. And in his voter pamphlet statement, he said his responsibility is to provide a robust workforce for Oregon businesses. Even if it is illegal. Legal, yeah. yeah, isn't that amazing? <laughs> I mean, the, yeah. the, the sickness goes mm -hmm. all the way to the top. So, so what, what do we do about it? Mean, we, we, if I could w borrow from your success and claim it as we <coughs> Oregonians, um, because there will, be, there will be more attempts um, to um, get people to work. And of course, it's been happening for some time that they're able to get to work because they get help from the businesses and all. So I, I think part of what I'm um, asking is this goes back to conversations that I've had with this mm -hmm. program of, so what what do Republicans need to do, or, or any of those who want to uphold the Constitution, their oath of office, how, how do we counter these efforts? Because in spite of a solid win, Somebody somewhere is trying to figure out a loophole or a yeah, way a absolutely. way around it, or or even another issue that might seem coming from left field. Um, what the work isn't done. Um, well, and this has been a long time coming. Mm -hmm. This isn't the work has been new. going on for a long time. Yes, <laughs> and it's not over since two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I would just add to your statement about what can Republicans do because I think that. This is uh, our nation's sovereignty mm -hmm. is threatened here. And if we don't begin to turn the ship ever so slightly, uh, we're just going to erase our border and uh, it, it'll be a free for all. Uh, wages are going down already, there's proof of that. Um, our veterans, our low skill workers, our young people, our, ha our uh, blacks are having the worst time mm -hmm. getting jobs. Mm -hmm. So the the people, the very people, the Democratic Party who claims to be wanting to help all of these people right. are the very people that are causing the problems that are harming them. And until everybody puts all the pieces together and says this isn't working, um, we're just going to continue on down this path. And it's really sad. I, I think it's really sad. We have the capability. We have laws. They simply need to be enforced, but we're not right. doing that. So can we go to this next legislative session <coughs> and simply lobby to uphold the laws that are on the books, forget passing new legislation or trying to find a loophole, but uphold the laws that are on the books, or Mr. Ms. Legislator, you are going to have a problem in your next election. Do you think there's the courage to do that on, on behalf well, of the citizens? I, I, th I think that we have to have a government that gets back to the basics of why there is mm -hmm. a government. And there's a great quote by uh, President John Adams, uh, he said, we are a nation of laws and not of men. Yeah. And I if we see what the government does now, they believe that people can pick and choose which right. laws they want to right. obey. And the government certainly does that all the time. And uh, the Oregon legislature in passing a bill to give driver cards to illegal aliens basically is aiding and abetting them to remain here, which is against federal law. So either and so they can get to their jobs, yeah, which, and, is and, and, <laughs> so which they're not qualified, yeah, they're to, not have, qualified yes. to do. And, and it's, it's amazing to me that we have a federal government that 
if you don't follow their dictates of a federal law that they don't like you doing, they're on your case. But they're running to turn a blind eye to states like Oregon or California that give special benefits to people who are here illegally, even though it's against federal law. Somewhere along so the line, we need to hold well, our um, our congressmen, our U.S. senators, um, accountable as well. And I would add. Um, the influence in the Oregon legislature, and I know it's the same way in Congress, is powerful. For anybody who's watching here, I would encourage them to go to the Capitol and walk the halls. Mm -hmm. And that's how I actually got started. I just started mm -hmm. walking the halls, looking around, mm -hmm. taking my little book, seeing the names, introducing myself, uh, going and sitting in on a hearing. That is your Capitol, you own it. Mm -hmm. And I, I went, I will not say the name of the legislator, um, but I was, at the Capitol during legislative days, and his assistant told me that the reason that he voted for the driver's cards was because 300 farmers influenced his vote. Mm -hmm. And I showed this little uh, handout, and I said, but 8,000 constituents voted it against it. So who is he actually working for? Is he working for his constituents, or is he just working for the farmers? Is he working for special a interest special groups? Interest group, yes. Which they're very powerful, and they're at the Capitol all the time. And when you're a legislator and you're sitting in the office, and the only people that you see coming by all the time are the Oregon Association of Nurseries and little groups of people from CAUSE and little farm worker people, and that's all you see, then you start to think that, well, maybe that's the way it is. So our legislators need to see your viewers. They need to be mm -hmm. in there regularly. They need to know their name. Mm -hmm. You can walk down the street and say, who's your representative? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's the, time the, to find out. Okay. <laughs> one of the ironies is, uh, Cynthia mentioned farm workers. If you look at the votes against Measure 88, <coughs> the counties that have the highest number or percentage mm -hmm. of farmers and mm -hmm. ranchers in mm -hmm. that county voted over 80% against giving driver cards to illegal aliens. Mm -hmm. So they, even though they have uh, probably, likely, a lot of illegal aliens working in there, 80% voted Well, against. they have one farmer that has 50 illegal mm -hmm. aliens living in their community, yeah. and then you've got 100 residents living there that are dealing with having them living there yeah. and breaking their laws and taking the jobs and doing all of those kinds of things. So. Um, Get acquainted with your state legislator and let them know what you expect from them. They get away with a lot because they're not held accountable That's for what right. they're doing. That's right. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, you learned this firsthand. It's been your experience. Yes. And yes. So what um, the session begins in just a few days, and um, what uh, you're going to be busy um, reminding people that <laughs> the voters <Yes. laughs> passed this by 66 percent overall. Yes. What other message would you like to leave? We have just a few minutes um, left, or a little, little few seconds. What would you like um, the audience I to know? I would say it's about time the Oregon legislature started talking about jobs. We have the true unemployment, the U6 unemployment, despite the claims of the government, is above 15%. Yeah. We have yes. terrible jobs uh, situation for citizens. Wages, the US Department of Labor has said over the last four years, real wages factoring in for inf inflation have actually dropped because mm -hmm. of if you have an overabundance of people trying to get jobs there's going to be a, re a reduced wage base for everybody and we one, need, one yeah. thing i'm sorry one thing that i would add quickly is that people think well if we if obama's amnesty or uh, executive order goes through then the situation will be solved but it and won't. the fact is that all that will do is invite more people here and those people that will be getting work permits will be exiting all of those supposed ag jobs and farm worker jobs. And so those farmers will, and they've already expressed a concern, all those workers mm -hmm. are going to leave. Now what are we going to do? Well, yeah. they'll need more people right. here. And we'll be vote. right back where we were mm -hmm. and, and having to tackle this again yes. al already. I think we have run out of time, if I'm not mistaken. I want to thank you, Cynthia and Jim, again so much for being here. Thank you and for congratulations us. Yeah. on behalf of Oregonians for that great <laughs> success. Keep up the good work and please come back and share with us um, what's happening next. Okay. Okay. So. We'll do.